the bells are ringing, you guys. The bells are ringing. <laughs> All the milkers got their bells on. And they got new collars, too. They got these, like, neoprene, like, waterproof, waterproof collars. They're, like, rubber. That's Gertie will model for us right here. Not bad. Quick, quick release. Got her bell. Gertie's got her bell. Molly, Molly's got her bell on. Oh yeah. All right, I'm pretty excited. I finally got a couple more pieces for the trailer. So I ordered a riv nut gun and my brazing. Some of the stuff I'm gonna braze with a, an aluminum solder. It's just not turning out as well as I wanted it to. So I think I'm gonna have to bolt a lot more together than originally anticipated, which is okay. It just, I really like the clean look of the, the welding. One of the problems that I'm having is some of the aluminum that I got off of Craigslist and some of the aluminum that I purchased, it's different thicknesses, so it heats up at different rates. So it's been very difficult to braise, whereas like the thinner stuff will start to melt before I get the other stuff hot enough to actually bond. And then when I do get it bonded, one is warmer than the other, so it bonds stronger on the other side. And it's just not working out like I wanted it to. But I did pick up a rivnut gun. I'm gonna start with that and I'll show you what I got going on so far. This year, we're gonna be setting up our feeding stations a little bit differently. We plan to feed a lot more of my grain mix and supplements to our milkers. So after they're done milking, they'll still have more food to eat. So we're gonna set up some tirings in this stall with a bucket so the goats will be tied to their individual spots to eat and finish the rest of their food after they're done milking. So I ordered some new bucket hooks and some buckets and some tie rings. And once those come in, I will show you how we're gonna set that up. But I'm really excited about that because they're gonna be eating a lot more food this year. Not Trudy though. Trudy is gonna be a dry yearling. So she needs not very much food. Not excited about that. Cause you love your foods. You love your foods. I'm up here in my feed corner and it's time to mix up another batch. And right now, no one's in milk, so we're just doing the grains. But when they go into milk, we will add in some dairy pellets. And I'm just going to mix in probiotics and vitamin E to my mix. So I'm going to get that loaded up and mix another batch. First, I'm going to do the whole oats in my bucket. So I have my whole oats here. And I'm just going to scoop some and put them in here. So the base of this mix is mostly whole oats. This is what they look like. Now I'm adding in barley. And this is what barley looks like. Kind of looks like oatmeal. There's a little piece of corn in there. That's what it looks like. And I kind of quit weighing it because I know I just do it by scoop now, like. Five scoops of oats, one scoop of barley. And then we'll do the black oil sunflower seeds. This is what black oil sunflower seeds look like. They're the same ones people feed. They're birds. You just get them at the feed store. And then I need to put in some flax seed. This is what about half of that. This is what flax seed looks like. I'm gonna add in some shredded beet pulp and I don't have this in a tote. This is really great for fiber for both. Kinda looks like that. And it has a smell, a beet pulp smell. Just gonna add in a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna add in some probiotics to the mix. Probiotics. Do two 
Oops, so that. And then we're gonna do some vitamin E powder. And it just looks like a white powder. Oh, there's a scooper in there. Way down in there. Oh, there we go. A little tiny one. Do two scoops of that. There's my mix, all done. I just got the barn cleaned out. And I added a couple more bells to the milkers. So Dottie has a bell, Gertie has a bell. Now Molly has a bell. And Mavis has a bell. Hello Lemon. Lemon's a troublemaker. Why is your eye wet? Yes, she is. Maybe she a little lemon. Thought you going to take a nap? Thought you going to take a nap? So I thought we would look at all the pregnant bellies. This is Gertie, and she is due on April 22nd. So she'll be the last goat to give birth on the farm. And then we have Molly, who's getting big. I'm in here cleaning, so my cleaning stuff's out. But Molly is going to be due on April 8th. Molly's due on April 8th. The first ones to give birth will be Dottie, who is due on March 31st, and Mavis, who's due on March 30th. Right here, Mavis. Also. Look at these two. These are Mavis's dolings from last year, and she gave birth to a copy from each side of her genetics. She gave birth to Sugar, the black and white one, who I think is so much like Mavis, and then Maple is exactly like Braun and Braun's damn May. She just looks just like her to me. And they're not bred this year. And then we have Fawn. And Esther. So Esther is due April. Esther's due April 9th. And Fawn is due April 18th. So here are the newest additions to the feed program. Another component to how I'm stepping it up. This is Zen Pro. It came in a big bag. And it's a spendy supplement, but it eliminates having a copper bolus. It has copper, zinc, and some other good stuff in it. It's supposed to be really awesome. Vitamin E, because when you do the monthly vitamin E and selenium, it really doesn't have as much vitamin E as you need. And then we're just adding in a probiotic daily. So they're getting a little probiotic every day. So everyone's getting an individualized feed program now. Hello, Molly and Esther. Mavis already went. Gertie's still up there because she's the slowest eater on the planet. So once Dottie's done, Gertie should be done as well. And then we'll get out Esther and Molly. And then we have to do Fawn still. Hang on, guys. So we're going to start getting everyone used to getting on the stand as well. And... That'll help for when it comes to milking time. And you always keep the same order. Don't don't change your order up. Don't change your pairs. Because they like their routines. Look at the width on Molly. She's our intermediate grand champion. She's the GOAT who won against 117 juniors. And just look at her. 
Already, can't wait to see an other fill in right there. Molly, she's gonna have little teats though, little tiny teats. There's always a trade off, guys. But these two will probably be their milking pair. We'll do Esther and Molly together. Here are some of the products that I had to purchase today. Um, I ordered these screws, these self tapping screws off of Amazon. I believe these are stainless or zinc. And then I ordered a countersinking bit, uh, countersinking drill bits to countersink those because they've got kind of a head on them that if you want it to set flush, it needs to be countersunk. Uh, since I got these at Harbor Freight, you always buy extra when you go to Harbor Freight because Harbor Freight tools are good for homeowner stuff and they're, they're basically like a one-time use. I did purchase an extra, this is the common size that I'm gonna use for the rib nuts. You gotta make sure that it's cobalt for the aluminum. I had a heck of a time drilling through the aluminum with standard drill bits. So I picked up a, a cobalt, make sure it's cobalt. That's what they specified for the aluminum. Um, picked up some cobalt drill bits and then this is a rib nut gun. Hi Kiki. It is, Kiki wants to say hi. Okay, get out of here. Got work to do. Okay, so this, this is a rib nut gun. I got this at Harbor Freight also, it's $50. And what it does is it will allow you to put these rib nuts, which are basically threaded inserts into the side of the aluminum. So I have a, a threaded connection there and it basically smashes in between uh, so that it will hold a nut or a, you know, a bolt. Um, I'm also gonna order some aluminum ones of these. These are, these are zinc. From the research that I've done, they say that zinc and aluminum, it won't corrode or create a, uh, an electrolysis between the two dissimilar metals. I don't, I t I'm having a hard time finding all aluminum fasteners, fasteners plus the threads on aluminum stuff um, are not the strongest. So a lot of the fasteners I'm gonna go to are gonna be zinc. Again, this whole setup is not gonna be permanent. Uh, I'm gonna build this so that it all unbolts really quickly from the trailer in case we sell the trailer and somebody wants to put horses in it again. So I've got one piece up right now. So that's gonna be the support for the second level, part of the support for the second level. And so you can see that I countersunk these, I countersunk these screws so they're all nice and flush so there's nothing that the goats can hang up on. I don't know, this is just like a nice clean look, I think. And so I've got those all into the trailer support members. All right guys, we worked well into the night and I got a little bit accomplished, not quite as much as I would have liked, but I did get all of the railings up for the double deck, or well, most of the railings up for the double deck. Uh, so this is what the platform is gonna set on. Um, and I got one of the posts anchored. Okay, so I took the plastic piece, I put threaded inserts into the frame rail up here, and then I put this piece of half inch thick plastic up there. And so the when we drive and when we move and stuff, the PVC, if it moves or wiggles or rubs, it won't scratch the roof of the, of the trailer. And then if we ever want to disassemble, it's as simple as pulling this pin and we can take this whole piece out and it comes right out of the bottom down there. It just lifts right up out of the bottom. And so we put it in. So we bring it over here, that, line up the pin and it locks in. It's all pretty tight and uh, once I get the rest of the frame kind of together, it'll be even more sturdy, but I, I want everything to be able to be disassembled. So if we ever tra sell the trailer, and then all you will see when we disassemble it is two threaded, two threaded holes there, two threaded holes down there. Not, you know, not really big holes or, you know, cuts or anything like that in the trailer. Everything's gonna be able to be removed and not leave uh, a bunch of marks, so. That's the plan anyways. So I'm gonna call it a night. I gotta clean all this up and we'll hit it again tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with us today and uh, we'll see you in the next video. We got Braun, Lipton, and Pickles. Just this is by the gate. Gate nipple or tree limb.